Hi everyone, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and this is the Orion Space Probe 2 76mm Equatorial Reflector. I'm going to be showing you how to set it up, from all the components in the box, all the way through final setup. So let's get started and see how it goes. Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is to take out all the components and make sure everything is there. I've got them laid out on the floor here, uh, just to give you an idea of what you're going to expect in the box. And I'll go through each part. The optical tube, obviously. Uh, you've got your manual as well, and then the parts and pieces that are going to be assembled together. The three tripod legs, the equatorial head, and the hub for the equatorial head. You've got your accessories on the side here, the two eyepieces and the finder scope. These are your slow motion control knobs, and then some various components to the mount itself. The counterweight shaft, counterweight, the tripod tray, and then a bunch of different screws to uh, assemble everything together. Alright, so let's get started putting this thing uh, together. The first thing you're going to want to do is to take the three tripod legs and atta attach them to the hub using these long bolts, the wing nut, and the washer. You should have three of these assemblies uh, uh, for three of the legs. The first thing to remember is the tripod accessory tray bracket goes on the inside. So make sure when you're putting the tripod legs on, the bracket is on the inside, not on the outside, because you're going to have to take it off and, and flip it back around. And the second thing to remember is where the bolt goes through the top of the leg, there's a hex-shaped cutout. That's the side that the head of the bolt goes onto, not the wing nut, because it, when it goes through, it slips straight into that and acts as a little washer. So we'll attach one onto the hub here, through the hub hole. out the other side, and then you put a washer on, and then the wing nut. And then just repeat that three time, two, two more times for the other legs. All right, I've got uh, all three legs on, uh, and I've made sure that the tripod bracket, uh, brackets are on the inside. Now, if you notice, the legs themselves are loose. They slide in and out. So the next step is to take the tripod uh, leg lock knobs and attach them to the bottom of each leg on the side. Just like that, and then repeat for the other two legs. Now that I've got the legs uh, attached and the lock knobs on there, I raised the legs up just so I could do this more comfortably without having to kneel down. Uh, the next step is the tripod accessory tray. It's going to go onto each of these little brackets with the included uh, small wing nut screw and two washers. So what you do is take a screw and a washer, put them together. It goes through the tray, through the bracket, and then the last little washer and wing nut go on the bottom of the bolt. Just tighten one down and then you can attach it to the other two. Once you've got the tray attached to the brackets, don't tighten the little wing nuts down fully. Leave them slightly loose and then pull the legs out to their widest position. This way the brackets don't interfere with the hole, so when you, when you put your uh, uh, eyepieces into the accessory tray, they'll slip in without uh, butting up against a bracket. Now that it's at its widest point, go back and tighten the wing nuts down by hand. Now that the tripod is fully assembled, it's time for the equatorial head, and that's just a simple matter of sliding it in with this collar here and then taking the large uh, wing nut with the fender washer and attaching it from underneath until it's hand tight. The next step is the latitude adjustment bolt. Uh, it's going to thread into this hole on the side here and butt up against the plate on the inside. So just thread it in and tighten it down until it butts up against the plate. Now you can get a little bit ahead in the assembly if you want to adjust this inwards to our latitude. This is going to adjust the latitude for your observing location. And uh, here in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area, we're at about 37 degrees north. So I know I've got to raise this thing up to 37. So while I'm here, I'm just going to loosen the latitude lock screw, which is this large bolt on the side, and then tighten this down. And you can see the mount is raising up. And I'm just going to keep going until it reads about 37 degrees on the scale right about there, and then lock it down on the side. Next you're attaching the uh, counterweight shaft onto the mount and then the counterweight itself onto the shaft. So the 
Kennewick shaft just threads into the bottom of the deck axis all the way in. And then the counterweight's going to slide over the shaft. Um, if the screw down on the bottom of the toe saver is not uh, coming off easy, just use a little Phillips screw driver to get it off. And then the counterweight just slides on. Make sure you loosen the lock knob on the counterweight. There's a little pin inside, so it's got to uh, come out of the way. Counterweight slides on, and then you can just tighten it down. And don't forget to reinstall the toe saver on the bottom of the counterweight shaft. The next step are the slow motion control cables. Uh, you've got a long one and a short one. Uh, on this particular setup, the long one should go on the deck axis. That's this top one here. And the short one goes on the right ascension axis. And on the right ascension, you've got actually two shafts on either side. So depending on your preference or uh, where you're aiming in the sky, you can swap that to either side. There's a little rubber protection ball stuck to the ends of the shafts. Uh, just pull that off. And then you will attach the slow motion knob with a little set screw. There's a flat on the shaft itself. So that's where the set screw attaches. That, that gives it a nice secure connection. So loosen up the locking screw, slide it over, and then tighten down the set screw, making sure again that you're attaching it to the flat section of the shaft. And then repeat it for the right ascension. Next you'll be attaching the tube uh, clamshell to the mount itself. This might already be attached to the optical tube in the box, so if it is, uh, just remove it and place it on top of the equatorial head. You're going to use the uh, socket head cap screw, uh, washer, and wing nut to attach it. The socket head cap screw goes through the top, through the mount, and then on the bottom you'll attach the washer first and then the wing nut. Then just repeat for the other hole. Once the clamshell is tightened down, and by the way you can use the uh, included Allen wrench if you want to get a little bit extra torque to, to tighten that down, then it's time for the optical tube itself. It just lays in the clamshell, roughly center, and then close the clamshell, loosen up the knob so the washer fits around the bottom portion of the bracket, and then just tighten it up to squeeze the clamshell onto the tube. Next you can install the finder scope into the bracket here. Uh, it fits in with the, sw the sweep of the base facing backwards, or the uh, lens in the front of the telescope. So here's the, here's the front, slips straight in until you hear a click, and uh, you've attached your finder. While I'm here, I'll show you the eyepiece. The next step, loosen the little set screw on the side, take out the cap, and then take your 25 millimeter eyepiece, which is the low power eyepiece that comes with the scope. It slides in, and the set screw tightens down to hold it. Don't try to unscrew or screw the, the, the eyepiece in. It's a little set screw on the side that loosens, and then the eyepieces slip in and out. One of the final steps you need to do before using your telescope at night is to balance it. We've, we've assembled everything, and I kind of roughly eyeballed where center was, but I'm sure it's not perfectly balanced. So you're going to want to unlock the two axes, the uh, right ascension and the declination, maybe bring it over to horizontal here, and then just let go and see what happens. So, uh, but don't go too far away when you let go. You want to just be here to catch it in case it is very far out of balance. So I can already tell when I let go, it's scope heavy. There's, there's too much weight on the scope side and not, not enough weight on the counterweight side because it wants to drop that way. So all you do is loosen the counterweight, slide it further down, lock it back down, and then see what happens. It looks like it's going to be about right towards the bottom. Right there. See, now it stays put even though it's unlocked and I can swivel it. That's right ascension. Then you want to do the same thing for declination. So loosen it here and then see which way the, the tube falls. And it looks like the tube's actually pretty well balanced. I, I will... Uh, loosen it here and show you what will happen. So if it's too far forward, the tube wants to drop forward or perhaps back. So loosen the clamshell ring here, slide the tube in the clamshell back or forth until it basically stays put in that axis. There we go. There's balance there. I've got it balanced in right ascension. So I'm ready to observe. Just make sure the tube ring, the clamshell, is tightened back down. Finally, uh, you'll want to align the finder scope. When you slide the finder onto the bracket, it's not pointed exactly at what you see in the eyepiece. Uh, so you'll want to calibrate that before you're able to use the scope to find something, um, or use the finder scope to find something and get it centered in the eyepiece. 
So the way I do that is during the day, I find some object way off in the distance, a, 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 an identifiable tree, the corner of a building, a power pole, about a quarter mile or more away is probably best. And you'll want to find it the hard way first without using the finder scope, get it in the eyepiece field of view, lock it down, maybe use your uh, slow motion control knobs to, to center it in the eyepiece, then look through the finder scope and you'll see the red dot and it probably won't be exactly on the object that you're looking at in the eyepiece. Use the two screws, there's a screw for left and right and up and down and that adjusts the dot up, down, left, right in the, in the view until it's centered on the same thing that you're looking at in the eyepiece. You might have to go back and forth a couple times to do it just to make sure you don't bump the scope as you go. But as soon as you've got that calibrated so the dot is showing what's in the middle of the field of view here, then you're ready to use the finder scope first on the night sky to center the moon or the planets and you'll be sure to find it in the center of your 25 millimeter eyepiece. All right, well there you have it. That wasn't too difficult. It didn't uh, need many tools. It didn't take much time. We got it fully assembled from all the parts in the box uh, to the fully assembled product. Uh, again, this is the Orion Space Probe 276mm Equatorial Reflector. Thank you very much. Clear skies.